watching Triple H from the WWE. You're watching RxMuscle.com, the truth in bodybuilding. Rx Television on RxMuscle.com. This is Ask Dave, better known as Hashtag Ask Dave, brought to you by Species Nutrition, Cuts Training and Fitness, and Liquid Sunrays. I'm your host, Sadiq Faruqi. This is your 30-minute question and answer show with Dave Palumbo. All your questions on diet, training, supplementation, IFBB pros, news, content galore this week on RxMuscle.com. Uh, off the top of my head, this week, Hide Yamagishi, we did the video yesterday, Dave and Chris Aceto, uh dispelling the rumors of Big Rami reuniting with Chris Aceto. We have James Hollingshead coming out tomorrow. Lee Priest on Iron Rage out now. We had a surprise visit from Jason Genova uh, earlier today, and then an epic bonanza of an interview with Dr. Tony Hughes. So all that and more, keep it locked to rxmuscle.com. But Dave, as we now bring in Dave Palumbo, the big news from the last couple of weeks for Species Nutrition. Species Nutrition is now officially in Canada. All the last few years, we've been getting all sorts of inquiries from Canada. Do we ship to Canada? Yes, we do. Uh, where can they get it from Canada? We did not find a distribution partner up until very recently, one that we could trust. Dave, if you want to expand a little bit more upon this landmark news for Species Nutrition now in Canada. Yeah, actually, the guys that, that own the... Um the URL and that are distributing over there in Canada, they actually, believe it or not, came and took my guru course just recently. And, you know, we talked, we sat down and we uh, ironed out a strategy. I said, look, you know, there's a lot of people who want species nutrition in Canada. It's a pain in the ass to ship it there. You know, you got to deal with customs and everything like that and import duties. And so we, we hammered out a good deal. And now you can go to speciesnutrition.ca and you can buy your species nutrition products there. So we made it nice and easy. I know there's a lot of hardcore people in, in Canada. There's people who just want to use the products, who want the high quality ingredients, and, and now they have the uh, access to it. So I'm very happy to announce that, uh, that it's over there. And guys, check it out. And uh, if you need the products, I highly advise you go over to them. And uh, Dave Battaglia, who is uh, our partner up there, is always, always available to answer questions and stuff like that for you guys. So contact him as well. And uh, I want to just say, you know, I love expanding the brand. And it, sometimes we don't do it because it's not the right partnership. So, but when we find the right person who really believes in the brand as much as we do, we love to expand. And like I said, I'm always looking for, for partners. Uh, we're still looking for someone in Australia that, that I feel comfortable with, that we can uh, put it over there. Because I know there's a lot of uh, Australian uh, people who are looking for species nutrition. We used to be in there years ago. And then, the, the, you know, the dollar got screwed up over there. It's very weak. At least there, the Australian dollar is kind of weak compared to our dollar. I know it's kind of getting a little better now, so we're still looking for strategic partners over there. But once again, it's a it's a process, and for us to put the time and effort into it, we have to have the right partner. So again, we'll drop the link below. If you're in Canada, check out speciesnutrition.ca. Let's get to the questions. The first two questions from the Dave Palumbo Experience app. The first question, so we've actually gotten this question quite often. Uh, I blame myself for not having addressed it in a separate video. Dave, it's about how you and I got connected together, what's my background in bodybuilding, how I have grown to like bodybuilding. So let, we'll, go, we'll go to the next question, but again, we'll, we'll make a separate video on that one. Um, Dave, Chris Aceto has his clients do muffins, then a shot of insulin before training, and then again as post-training. Why would you do insulin post-training if you already got the ability to absorb nutrients after training? from GLUT4 receptors being able to soak up nutrients to push them into the muscle for recovery. I know a few of his clients who do this, and I see extension of stomachs, not sure what's the point. Um, I, to be honest with you, I really don't know what Chris does. I didn't. I never heard of that. You know, Remember, this past week, people said that Chris Aceto was working with Big Rammy, and that wasn't true. So I, I don't know that Chris does that. Um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't bank on it, but... The bottom line is that everyone has their own techniques and their own, you know, tricks that they use, so to speak. If you're taking growth hormone, okay, and you're insulin resistant, meaning that you're not absorbing all the carbs you're eating because the growth hormone is making you insulin resistant and it's, and it's inhibiting the insulin from getting to the receptors, you know, there's nothing wrong with supplementing with some insulin, you know, um, if you need it. Some people don't. Some people do. And the best way to determine if you need it is check your blood sugars, you know. 
Uh, if you're running high blood sugars, you know, during the day, over 130, two hours after your meals, then you probably need a little boost. You know, if you're running high fasting morning sugars, we've talked about using long-acting insulins. Um, I don't know what Chris's protocol is, if he uses it or not. And so for me to comment on that would be ridiculous. Um, but I could certainly see Chris maybe, you know, giving a larger than, you know, life meal maybe after a workout if he has a client that has trouble, you know, glycogen loading. And the insulin can just only help that, especially if they're using a lot of GH. Now, once again, I don't know what he's doing, so it's silly for me to speculate. Um, I, after training, usually I, I, you know, I've used insulin in the past. I've used IGF in the past after training. Uh, a lot of times you don't need it, like you said, because you produce these glute receptors that allow you to absorb glucose in the absence of, you know, any kind of insulin being necessary. But sometimes, you know, people eat, look, I'm not a guy who ever ate a ridiculous amount of carbs right after I trained because I just couldn't stomach it. But if you ate 200 grams of carbs, you know, or 100 grams of carbs, a little insulin wouldn't be necessarily a bad thing. So it really depends on the situation. You know, I, it's hard to say this is no and this is yes. There's, there's an in-between gray area. Let's go to the Instagram question. If you're not following us, our handle is official underscore RX muscle. So we're going to start with a pretty deep one here from Weapon X IFBB Pro. A good topic that I personally got asked about a lot is how I juggle real life and contest prep. I think pros have a good handle on this, but I know too many amateurs who completely forego all friendships, social interactions, and who even go as far as taking out a bunch of credit cards and going in extreme debt to pay off for prep. Quote, bodybuilding all the way or nothing seems to be the mentality for a lot of young guys these days. Giving advice from your experience to younger competitors of how to enjoy real life and still give their all and have a successful prep will be a great thing to discuss in my opinion. You know, it, it's, it's a tough one because you know what? You become so consumed with wanting to be the best bodybuilder possible that you sometimes go and do things that maybe are not in your best interest and you you forego, you know, look, look I, I, I'm all for sacrificing going out to the movies and buying, you know, cars and, and fancy items to save that money for bodybuilding. I think that's a smart move, okay? But if you want to, if you, if you, if you want to try to live the high life and still be a bodybuilder and then you wind up putting yourself in debt that you can't come out of, that's a stupid move. That's a bad business move. You know, when I would get ready for shows and I would be spending maybe more money on supplements and, and protein powders and drugs, a lot of times I ate all my meals in. I cooked all my own meals. I didn't go out to eat at all because I didn't want to spend the extra money, especially early in my career. Um, sometimes, you know, I went a little above and, and, and bought stuff that maybe I, I wasn't so comfortable with spending, you know, when, especially with growth hormone being so expensive back in the 90s. Um, but I always had a plan. So usually I got lucky. You know, I, I, I put it out there. I would buy what I needed. And then for some reason, I always found a way to make money and, and pay it off. You know, my dad always taught me, you know, credit cards were just a convenience. They weren't a way, they weren't a bank to finance, you know, stuff that you didn't have money for. So I never spent more than my credit card enabled me to pay off. So uh, I never went into, I never had credit card debt. I never owed like $5,000 on a credit card that I was paying minimum payments every month for. That just, that wasn't in my wheelhouse. That's not how I operated. Um, I, I couldn't, I, I wouldn't want to live with that stress because it's hard to get away from that debt, you know, especially when you wind up just paying the interest every month and you, and you have this, this principle there. That's not good business sense. And I know Jay Cutler would tell you the same thing and all the good business guys out there would tell you that. So don't put yourself in a hole where you, you can't climb out of just to be the best bodybuilder you can be. You know, find ways to make more money. You know, if you have to go and coach more people, if you have to go out there and do more seminar, you might have to work a little harder is what I'm saying. And this, that's how you make the extra money so that you can afford the things that you, you need. Also, when you're getting ready for a competition and you need to spend more money because uh, the, you know things are expensive, don't do the luxury items. I'm all for being a monk you know, and, and living that lifestyle of, of the monk you know, prior to a show because – it makes sense financially. You know, if you're going to give your all to bodybuilding and some people might say, hey, it's not well balanced. You know, you're, 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 you know, you're being a non-human. You know, this is, it's a waste of time. Well, you know what? If you, if you want anything bad enough, whether you be a writer, 
whether you're be, you want to be the best video game player or you want to be the best carpenter, you have to put a lot of time and effort into it. You have to, you have to cons be consumed with it. You have to completely immerse yourself in what you're doing. So I don't have a problem with that. I have a problem when people become destructive in the behavior that they're doing and maybe start doing things that they shouldn't be doing. Uh, some guys get into using you know, prescription drugs to, to avoid the pain of the contest diet or they just, you know, they just maybe life is bothering them or they broke up with a girlfriend. That's destructive behavior. But if you're putting your time and your focus into your bodybuilding to be the best person that you could be, whether people think it's right or not, if it's right for you, then that's what you should be doing. And, and I'm all for people giving 100% to the, what they're doing. Now, Sid, before we go on to the next question, I just want to also mention that the, my Secrets to Becoming a Diet Guru course is coming up June 29th. That's in a couple of weeks. So, guys, we only have like three spots left in the class. If you go to DavePaloma.com, you can sign up. It's my 10-hour class. I go over everything. I teach you. You know, a lot of people have been asking me, hey, Dave, I don't really, have, I don't really know that much about biology and, and, and nutrition. I, I think I might have to take a course before I take yours. Let me tell you something. I start from scratch. I teach you as if you know nothing because I want to build the building blocks correctly. If I just go into train, uh, to, to diet and talking about nutrition as if you know something, everyone comes from different backgrounds, that's not helping the process. If you know nothing and you want to learn, come to this course. It will teach you the bare you know, basics. Um, if you also know a lot and you want to learn, you're going to learn a lot more. It's going to be, some of it will be repetitive for you and, and will be a reminder, but I will teach you the right way. And that's the key, learning the right building blocks of what makes up nutrition and diet and supplementation and drug use, because that, there is a right way and there is, there is a scientific method to it. And in 10 hours, you will leave this class, you know, completely enlightened. I promise you, you can ask anyone who's taken the class in the past. Uh, they will tell you it was worth every penny that they spent. And if you, if you, if you think that you're going to be a coach and this is something you're going to do for a living, you might as well learn the right way to do it so that you can be an expert in what you're doing. So that's once again, Saturday, uh, the 29th of June here in Cape Coral, Florida, you sign up at DavePalumbo.com. Don't wait. Like I said, there's only three spots left. Also that you mentioned earlier, the Dave Palumbo experience app. A lot of people have been signing up for that and being, they're super, super happy with it for $29 a month. You have a, a, an app that's on your phone and that you have access to all the articles and all the videos I've done in one place. Plus you can ask unlimited questions and all the questions get put in a public forum. So you don't just see your own answers. You see the answers to everyone's questions in there. Plus, I do an exclusive Q&A video once a week for the app members, and we put up weekly workouts so that you guys can grab those workouts and use them in the gym. So once again, tell your friends about it. It's the Day Plum Experience app. You download it at the iTunes or Android store. Let's go to Jay Warchild. Dave, a fairly well-known bodybuilder, doesn't specifically mention who, said you don't need as much protein in the offseason as preseason because you're getting enough calories from your other foods to build muscle, such as carbs and fats. Is that true? It's true and it's not true. It's true in the sense that, you know, if you're use, eating carbs, you're sparing, you know, the muscle, all the protein you're eating from being used as, as fuel. Because let's face it, when you're dieting and you're on a low-carb diet, you're going to use some protein and fat as a fuel source. The, diff the problem is, though, when you, in the off-season, you're trying to grow. So your protein requirements are different. You actually need more protein. So you, I would say probably pre-contest versus off-season, I think you still need more protein in the off-season because you're trying to take in excessive calories in the, or excessive protein so that you can have that available to build muscle. The difference is in the off-season, I mean, in pre-contest, you'd love to take the extra protein and to ensure you don't lose muscle and maybe even add some muscle. But unfortunately, if you add too many extra calories, your body starts using that as fuel and then you don't burn stored body fat. So even though conceptually you would think you don't need quite as much protein in the off-season, you really do because you're trying to add massive amounts or at least maximize the amount of muscle you're putting on. Ash Smith 350, Mike O'Hearn says that he is so strong because he has been working on strengthening his tendons with powerlifting. Is it possible to strengthen tendons? Is powerlifting the best way to do this? Or are there supplements, both legal and illegal, that would increase their strength? Well, you know, when you, when you break down muscle in the gym, you're also breaking down tendon, connective tissue, cartilage. The problem is no one takes enough of the raw materials to repair all that stuff. So what happens is the tendons and, and ligaments weaken over the years. And then when you get older, like me, you, you start tearing stuff, you know. So um, taking a product like Arthrolyze, which is a high, high potency glucosamine, chondroitin, and MSM product, 
on a regular basis, you know, four grams of each of these ingredients per day is going to definitely help your body recover. I don't think that Mike, you know, does anything beyond what anyone else does necessarily to strengthen tendons. I think he just happens to have very good tendon strength, which is probably why he's so strong to begin with. The guy's a naturally strong guy. You know, he's, he's no pun intended, of course, but he's, he has just good strength. He's always been strong, even when he was younger. And he really has no injuries that I know of, so or that he talks about. So I have to believe that he, his body is made to lift. You know, whereas someone like myself, I I turned myself into a good lifter because I was able to add all that muscle and using the science and the diet and everything like that. I became strong. I never was as strong as him naturally. I became strong as I got bigger, and I think that's why my my joints were never meant to handle that much weight. So I wind up with you know shoulder problems and stuff like that. So. You know, sometimes guys have genetic gifts. Mike is genetic gifted. He has these strong ligaments and tendons that hold his joints together. And and that's why he'll probably always be a strong guy, probably up until the day he dies. Let's go to Poppy Rico 9. Dave, if you could only choose four compounds for a one time only mass cycle, what would you choose for how long and how would you combine them? I'd probably use like obviously a baseline of testosterone, at least a thousand milligrams per week. Um, if, if I'm only choosing, you know, four different drugs, I would probably choose trembolone acetate at maybe like 50 to hundred milligrams every other day. I would use growth hormone at about three to four I use per day. And you know, the, the, the fourth drug is, is variable. You know, it, I don't think that there's any magic. Some guys would pick IGF one. Some guys might pick insulin. It, it, it's hard to say those three would be my three you know, the GH, uh, testosterone, and Tremble would be my three favorites. You know, if I had to pick another anabolic steroid, probably be like Equipoise for growth purposes. Um, I don't really like the orals because they kind of kill your appetite. If I had to pick a protein hormone, it would probably be IGF-1, uh, if, assuming it's real. Uh, that's probably would be the way I'd go with that. Um, you know, if I was picking, if I had to pick like an aromatase inhibitor or something like that, you know, maybe a Remedex or something like that. But you know, as far as the drugs go, I think GH, testosterone are the most important too. And then pick a strong anabolic and there's nothing stronger than Trembolone. So those would be my top three. Victor Saldana, classic. Who do you see making the biggest jump from last year's Olympia to this year's? Not someone like Josh Lenardowitz since he wasn't there last year. My guess is Steve Kuklo. My uh, guess would be Brandon Curry. I think we're <laughs> going to see him have the biggest jump in the standings. Who knows? He might even win. Uh, but I think he's going to be a top three guy this year. Rayman Zarek, Dave running EQ for the first time. Can I get my blood test done about 12 weeks in, 25-week cycle, and send it to you to see when I should get blood drained? Or how do you go about doing that with guys running EQ test 800, EQ 500? I'm, I'm going to do a video. I was going to do a rant this week. I think we ran out of time. Unless, you know, maybe Tyler will be in here tomorrow. We'll, we'll, we'll sneak one in. But the rant is going to be on basically exactly this topic. You know, steroids... Anything, even HRT levels, will raise red blood cell count. They stimulate the bone marrow to produce more red blood cells. Those are the, the cells that carry oxygen. D distance endurance athletes, cyclists, they take EPO, which stimulates the bone marrow to produce what? More red blood cells. Why? Because they carry oxygen to the muscles. The more oxygen you can get to the muscles, the, the better endurance you're going to have, the better you're going to perform. Um, Cyclists have super high red blood cell counts, okay, and hemoglobin and hematocrit because of that. The hematocrit is just the thickness of the blood given, and the more red blood cells you have, the thicker the blood gets, obviously. So they have super high amounts and, and never really have any problems, okay? The problem is if you produce too many platelets, which is another component of, this blood, of the blood cells, steroids don't increase platelet count. Platelets are what cause clotting. So if you had too many platelets in your blood, that would certainly be a dangerous situation because you can get a clot. And if it happens in your heart, you're going to have a heart attack. If it happens in your brain, you're going to have a stroke. And if it happens in your lungs, you're going to, you know, you're going to die. So uh, that's something you don't want. But regular, just anabolic usage only increases red blood cells. So the truth of the matter is, I don't think you really need to dump blood. As a matter of fact, I find that if you dump blood, okay it will temporarily lower your red blood cell count and hemoglobin and hematocrit levels. But I think they come right back. And sometimes they come back even higher because now the body is compensating because it thinks it doesn't have enough because you just, you just lost all this blood. So 
I think it's it's probably safe if you're not in the excessively excessively high range of red blood cell count. If you're just elevated because you're on anabolics, I wouldn't touch the blood at all. I wouldn't dump any blood whatsoever. Now, if you have a disease genetically where you're producing more of all the blood cells, red blood cells, white blood cells, platelets, now we're talking a different situation. You really should dump blood. Let's go to Alicia M. Davey, talk a lot about uh, your days eating McDonald's regularly during your bodybuilding career. What exactly was your order at McDonald's when you were getting huge? Do you still stand by McDonald's for maximum gains, or should we be pursuing another fast food chain? I think there should be a study that someone does out there. Maybe we can get like, um, what's his name, the, down in um, the natural bodybuilder. Who is the guy, powerlifter guy? Uh, Lane Norton. Let's get Lane Norton to run this study. I'm telling you, McDonald's has got something in that meat that builds muscle. I don't know what it is, but I'm telling you, I, when I ate McDonald's, and I, and I tried on all my clients, they, they all respond the same way. You build muscle on McDonald's, I don't know what it is in there that's doing it. Um, my order, I've told people this uh, story before. I, what I would get is they, they had a dollar menu. The, the uh, cheeseburgers were a dollar a piece or something like that. Or the double cheeseburgers used to be a dollar a piece. So I would get three double cheeseburgers and I would put them on two buns. So I would put three patties on a bun and I would have two of those. So I would have two basically triple cheeseburgers. And I always held the pickle and the onions because that was always what came up on me. I would have at the, back when I was doing it, they had supersizing. So I would have a supersized fry. I would have a Diet Coke with that. And I would have two apple pies for a dollar. So for under 10 bucks, I had over 50 grams of protein. And I had a nice big fries and apple pies to carb up. And I would usually actually, believe it or not, I would go to the gym after that, like about an hour to two, after, two hours after that meal. And I ate that meal every single day, every single day, probably for at least 15 years. Um, and I'll tell you what, I have no blockages in my coronary arteries. I have no calcium buildup, nothing. So, which just goes to show you that it's, it has nothing to do with what you're eating. It has to do with what you're accumulating, what you're accumulating. So I had, I always had very low body fat. I always had low LDL cholesterol. Now that might be partly genetic in my case. It also has to do with the fact that I have, if you're lean and your body is burning the food that you're eating, you're not storing it. It's when you store the bad food that you get problems. And so I was eating this McDonald's every day, but I was using it for fuel. I was using it to build muscle, and that's why I didn't have the side effects. If you're you know, 20 pounds overweight and you're eating McDonald's every day, you're probably storing a lot of it, and, and you're probably not utilizing it in, in a good sense. So... When I use McDonald's in my clients' diets, like I have a lot of guys I'm getting ready for shows now, even some women, and they're super ripped and crazy lean, and sometimes they get too depleted. What do I tell them? Tonight, go out and have a double cheeseburger, a double quarter pounder with cheese, you know, with a, with a large fries, and, you know, call me in the morning, so to speak, like a doctor would say, because I know it's going to help them. It's going to fill them out. It's going to speed their metabolism a little bit, and they're not storing anything because they got nothing in them. They're depleted. Their body's using what they're eating, and that's how I use McDonald's. In an off-season scenario, if I have guys that can't gain weight, no matter what I feed them because the food is too clean, I'll throw in a McDonald's maybe every other day, maybe even every day if they have a super fast metabolism, and then that seems to break that, you know, that plateau a lot of times. Why McDonald's? I don't know. You probably can use any of these fast food chains. That's just what I like and what I've used for success. Let's go to Seb Bodybuilder. Dave, hate your show uh, more than Chris Aceto hates his tenants. Um, for a typical hard gainer person, is it a good idea to wake up in the middle of the night and have a shake with egg whites, 50 grams of Targo, and creatine, then back to sleep for the next few hours? Absolutely. You know what I used to do? This is a, a God honest truth. At my biggest... I was getting up twice during the night. I was having, at the time, I was having a packet or a packet and a half of metrics. I think it was about 40, 45 grams of protein. There was some carbs in it. And then I was having another 100 grams of, at the time, I was buying powdered ultra fuel. Um, so I was having <clears throat> two shakes like that at night. So I was having like 45 grams of protein, 100 grams of carbs. I don't think there was a lot of fat in there. I, I wasn't into eating fat. At that, I don't think at that stage of my career, I was into eating a ton of fat. I would do that twice during the night, and I would literally blend it and gulp it down and go back to sleep. It was because I could swallow things in two seconds. It, it, it didn't matter, but my metabolism was so fast at that point. I think for most people, if they did that, it would be overkill. But 50 grams of protein, 50 grams of carbs, it, once you know during the night, if you're in a bulking stage, that's fine. Let's go to IFBB Judge Ian Cam. Your take on taking BCAs while on prep? You know it. I, 
conceptually, it's a good idea, right? Because you figure you're not going to lose muscle. It's, you're going to provide a nice amount of branch chain amino acids, essential amino acids infused into the bloodstream. Unfortunately, what most people do is they counteract the fat burning process. Here, their body wants to do is dig into stored body fat to mobilize fatty acids to use for fuel when you're dieting because between meals, you're, there's nothing there, right? So, and then here you go, drinking these branch chains that everyone thinks are free calories. They're not, they're protein. If you're drinking branch chains, more than likely your body will use those branch chains, turn them into glucose, and use that for fuel instead of digging into stored body fat. And I have a lot of clients, sometimes they don't tell me they're doing it. I find out by asking them to run a food diary for me and tell me what they're eating during the day, and I see branch chains twice, three times a day. I'm like, guys, no wonder why you're not losing any weight. Girls do this too, all the time. And I pull it out. The second I pull it out, their weight starts going down again. There's no such thing as free calories. There's no free meals. You have your set meals. If you're a guy, usually it's six feedings a day. Usually if it's a woman, it's, it's five feedings a day. And that's it. There's no snacking. There's no, um, there's no pre-workouts uh, if they have carbs in them. And there's certainly no amino acids all day long. That is not going to help you get into shape. Van Nets, Ivan, quote, do not mix carbs and fats together. How did this myth get created, and is there any truth to it? You know, I take credit for it. I think I'm the one who, who started that whole fucking myth years ago. Back in the early 90s on the message boards, I think I printed something about not mixing fats and carbs. And um, I don't know. I just, just didn't think it was a good idea. And, then I, you know, I changed my, my viewpoint down the road. And there's really no, there's no bad thing. Remember, your body knows how to sort out nutrients. Your, your fat requirements and your protein requirements are what they are. Carbs are just a fuel source. Insulin doesn't store fat as fat. It only stores carbs as fat. So that was a mistake on my part. Once again, I, it was like 18 years ago or 20 years ago, I probably said that. And then I, re, 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 uh, I redacted it. So, uh, but people still are running with that idea. And, it, and other coaches have taken that and said, yeah, don't mix the two together. That's not true. Matter of fact, when I carb people up at the end, I have them eating protein, fat, and carbs because I want the fat and protein to be used for repairing muscle, the carbs to be stored as glycogen. So... There's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. Uh, it's a big myth. And once again, if you ate an excessive amount of carbs and an excessive amount of fat, you're going to get fat, obviously. That, but it doesn't have anything to do with the fact that you're mixing them together. It's just the fact that there's too many calories there. So when you figure out what you need, it doesn't matter if you mix the two or not. Let's go take a couple of more questions. George RJ, Dave, how do you deal with the constant hunger during prep? I know there isn't much you can do. But do you have any tips that make things easier? Also, I guess to correlate to that, before bed, do you take anything to help with sleep? Drink a lot of coffee. Drink a lot of you know diet sodas if you have to to quench your thirst. That I did that a lot. I would drink so much that I actually I could actually just sit on the toilet and never get up. I could just constantly pee, 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 because all I was doing is drinking, uh, which which will tend to drive you nuts. But it, it will take that appetite away a little bit. Um, eating, you know higher, you know, a little bit more fat in your diet, a little less carbs. Being in ketosis takes away hunger because when you're in ketosis, your brain can use fat as fuel, which you always have a, a supply of fat to, and that helps a lot. There's a lot of different strategies. What I used to do when I was super hungry is I would just get out of the house. I would go, go to the mall, go to the, anywhere just to stay out of that, that temptation area because once you're in your house alone, you start, you know, dipping your, dipping your hands into the into the cookie jar, so to speak, or into the nut bag, and start eating a few almonds here and there. Before you know, it, you've eaten the whole bag. Not a good idea. That's very destructive behavior. Um, and you got to be tough about it. Now, I, I produce a product called Somalize. You take three pills about 15 to 20 minutes before bed. It will relax you. It'll keep you asleep. And, uh, you know, because I know a lot of bodybuilders have trouble sleeping when they're dieting because their bodies are hungry. Also, try to time your last meal right before bed. So, you know, maybe 20 minutes before you go to sleep, you have that last meal, you do your fiber shake, whether you're using Fiberlize or something else, and then, and then you could take your Somalize if you're having trouble sleeping right 15 minutes before bed and go to sleep. You know, I was in that same regimen every single day. I never deviated from it. My body got into a rhythm and it, and it worked. One more question. This one from Old School Matt. Dave, you have been a huge influence on bodybuilding. If someone told you to create a TV or channel on fitness or bodybuilding, so I, I guess what he wants, he wants advice. If they, somebody wanted to start their own channel on fitness or bodybuilding, how would you go about it? 
Well, you know, I already did it. <laughs> you, said, you know, when I or first. What advice would you give? Yeah. Yeah. When I first set out, my, that was my goal to start a bodybuilding and fitness channel. And I had all these ideas and I wanted to be, I wanted it to be advice. I wanted it to be information. I wanted it to be contest coverage. I wanted it to be interviews with people. I wanted it to be debate and talk and discussion. Uh, and and that's every that's everything we're doing, you know. Versus was another show pitting bodybuilders against each other hypothetically, who would win in virtual pose downs. These are all things, and you know, you guys might have other ideas out there. Do something unique, Do, you know. Uh, Nick from uh, Nick's Strength and Power, he created his own channel. He's doing better than you know. He has more views and more subscribers than we do. So. He, you know, decided I was, he was going to, like, you know, look up the history of the sport and, and whether, wherever he gets his information from and do interesting, you know, videos about it, you know, and try to cover news stories that are relevant. Anyone can do it. You know, you don't have to be an expert. Obviously, my forte is the fact that I've competed. I'm a guy who's a contest prep guy. I'm a, an information disseminator. So I have a built-in audience. The hardcore people are going to listen to my channel right off the bat, as long as I'm giving them regular content, and that's what we do here at RX Muscle. If you're unknown, you have to create a niche for yourself by putting the content out there and do it on a regular basis. People like regularity, and that's what TV is all about. Look, if you turn your TV on, there's always something you can watch, right? If someone goes to your channel and you haven't updated it in, in, in four weeks, they're not, going to, they're not going to be checking your channel anymore. I have a reptile channel where I do my snake videos and stuff like that. It's called Muscle Serpents uh, University. And you know what? People love the channel. And I wish I could put – if I put up a video every day, I would probably have more subscribers than I would have on RX Muscle because there's a lot more reptile lovers than there are bodybuilders in this world. The problem is I don't have time to do it. I'm, I'm too busy doing the, the bodybuilding stuff, which is, I really, you know, which is my first love. Reptiles is my second love. It, but, you know, and people are always asking, and I probably would have, once again, more subscribers and more viewers if I did it on a regular basis. So if you're going to do something, do it right. If you want to have a successful bodybuilding channel, you have to be creative, okay? You can't be stealing from everyone else all the time because that gets old and no one gives a crap. Do stuff that's, you know, opinionated. Give your opinion, be sh strong about it, and open up your life. Yeah. You if you're not willing to tell everyone everything about yourself, then you're not going to have a successful channel. It's going to be a fake channel. There's plenty of them out there. You guys know I don't have to mention them. I don't need to call people out. There's a lot of fake, you know, phony people out there. But the people who open themselves up, that's why Rich Piano was so, you know, he did a lot of sensationalistic stuff, but he was also very honest about his life. And because of that, I think people could, were able to relate to that. Not to mention that he was a bigger-than-life character. So just be honest, you know, Put it out there. Don't be afraid to be wrong. or Don't be afraid that people are going to judge you. And let the cards fall where they may. That is going to do for this episode of Ask Dave. Again, brought to you by Species Nutrition. Again, the link below for Canadian consumers for speciesnutrition.ca, Cuts Training and Fitness, and Liquid Sunrays. For our producer, Tyler Shore and Dave Palumbo, I'm Sadiq Faruqi. We'll see you next time.